Super excited to have the new associate head coach of BYU women's basketball, Lee Kamard, back in studio. Yeah. Lee, congratulations on uh, the promotion and the position. Good to have you back in studio. It's always good to be with you guys. I'm just excited that I get to do this another time with you. I know. You. I was going to Go. say that there was a moment where maybe this <laughs> wasn't going to happen, but uh, here we are. So what's the last uh, month or so been like for you? It's been a roller coaster. Um, long process. I mean, everybody loves Judd, and we're – shocked you know when he kind of told us that morning and then from there just trying to get involved and get in the mix with potentially uh being the replacement for him didn't play out that way but super excited about where the program's headed um amber whiting uh called me the day she got it and probably within a few minutes after it being announced and super excited we, we have a great relationship our recruiter son on the men's side Spent a lot of time recruiting our daughter on the women's side. And then throughout this process, we kind of knew, hey, whoever gets it, you know, let's go do this together. So it's been good. Um, and now I'll just get back to work. So you're saying if you had gotten the head coaching job, you would have brought her on as an assistant? Is that a absolutely. Mm. Yeah, that was – I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of conversations. Um, she probably stole some of my material to use, <laughs> use in the interview, but that's all right, you know. Um, she's good. And, and like I said, like I, I definitely would have tried to bring her on staff if she would have been open to it. And she's fiery and she's feisty and she – I've watched her, you know, as you go out and you recruit and you see her in the club circuit, just you watch coaches and how their their team responds to them. And, and her girls play for her, you know, and, and uh, that that fire was there. And so it was something that was noticeable. We, we sensed that fire, too, in our conversation with her. Certainly. Like, like real competitive nature. She's yeah. ready to prove the world wrong. We, we got that impression <laughs> very early, right? Absolutely. Little petite. And, but we're going to rip your head off. Yeah. <laughs> that type of thing. So Dangerous. It, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Lee Kamard is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, we have to go to this scenario because Shaylee Gonzalez has been such a huge part of the sure. BYU women's basketball program over the last four years. Had a redshirt year, got an extra year of eligibility because of the COVID exception. She was dynamite, obviously. She announced that she's entering the transfer portal. Um, I think every BYU fan's hoping that maybe she's second guessing there. So, what can you update us on in the situation with Shayla Gonzalez leaving BYU? I will tell you this: she's not all the way out yet. I had a great conversation with her yesterday. She is exploring, and every single school is. I'm sure now, as they should, right? Uh, my my thing I want to share is Shaylee, Our arms are right here. Anytime you want to come back, we'll have you. Come be great at BYU. Come back, fly past Jimmer, fly past Lexi, and fly past Danny, fly past Tina Gunn, come get the scoring title. Let's hang your jersey in the rafters is, is, is what I think. And what I see playing out, we got a good roster. She makes it even better. We still have a work cut out, whether she's here or not, because we're trying to replace you know 50% of the production. Uh, from last year and some really experienced seniors. But, yeah. but Shaylee, we're here. We love you. We want the best for you. Go explore. Get what you need, the information, and we'll go from there. That's a beautiful soundbite. I paused just so we could <laughs> edit it cleanly right there. Um, when it comes to Shaylee, obviously you want her back. What was, was there surprise with this decision, or did you anticipate that this was a possibility given the connection with Judd, the connection with you, um, you know, apparently her mom was in the mix for the job, too, so I could see where that plays a role. Was this a surprise to you, this situation? Uh, not entirely. Probably um, a little bit, but not entirely. Uh, she wants to play at the highest level, and she shared that, you know, she wants to get to a Final Four, you know, and play for a national championship. And also her dream is to play in the WNBA. And I, I fully support that dream and want to help her achieve that. And so go talk to these teams, see what they have to offer. Uh, it's just the new landscape of college basketball mm -hmm. where roster maintenance is a real thing and um, trying to always have the best competitive roster to go and compete year in, year out because people want to play on the big stage, and that's just what it is. Now, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Does she have two years of eligibility correct. left? Two years left. So she could see the Big 12 with you. Absolutely, yep. And 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 that that's what puts her within reach of all those scoring marks, yes. right? Like, if she averaged what she averaged this year, she'd blow out all the scoring records right here. Like men, men, men and, and women. women. Yeah. yeah, Tina's the highest scorer mm -hmm. in BYU history, but she would she would run past that probably game about sixty. 
Did she run past you already? Or is oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Come on. The transfer port is so interesting. We were talking about this yesterday on the show. Like, it giveth and it taketh away. Sure. Because uh, we, we can't sit here and be like, you know what's awesome? Puka Nakua and Samson Nakua. But you never get, like, no one ever leaves. Sure. Like, it's just different, though, when it's Shaley. Absolutely. Like, like she is such – um, I, I, I was going to say this till later when we were talking about her more, but she's the face of women's athletics at BYU. Sure. She's one of the main faces, period. Yeah. Um, her following and, on social. Like, she's such and a she's big got deal. a chance. she's got a chance to be the most decorated athlete at BYU, depending on how the next two seasons plays out, yeah. arguably, yeah. right? She's already – if not the goat, one of the goats in BYU basketball, women's basketball history. You put her on the Rushmore for women's sure, hoops. Yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Already as it is, but she has a chance to solidify herself, no question about it, as the goat and on the athletic department Mount Rushmore. You know, and so that's that's exciting. I I, I want that for her. I understand she's got to do what she's got to do, um, but but that's all within reach in my. My perspective. Yeah. Lee Kamard is on BYU Sports Nation. One more year in the West Coast Conference, then the jump to the Big 12. What is the most important thing this final year in the West Coast Conference that BYU women's basketball needs to accomplish in order to feel comfortable about making that Power 5 jump? Besides getting Shea the back. Yeah, start, start <laughs> to Shea. No, I mean, with Shea or without, like, we're, we're replacing, I think, like 500 games of experience between Tegan Paisley, Sarah, and Maria, right? That's like, unbelievable. Wow. And the scoring production of all of them yep. and the efficiency and just the buy into the team. Like that's, but you had this group of freshmen and a, a couple other younger classmen that are just waiting for their turn. Nani Falate, Emma Calvert, among for others. Sure. Smiler's ready to make a jump. Lauren Gustin's ready for a little bit more, you know, that type of thing. And so as we head in, yeah, everybody that's on the roster this year potentially will be with us as we enter the Big 12. So solidifying. A, a great team, cohesive myth and that chemistry and taking that, some of the experience that's gained this year as we enter the Big 12. Yeah, we want to compete for the title every year. That's expected. Yeah, we want to win the conference tournament. That's expected. Yeah, we want to go to the NCAA tournament. That's just BYU women's basketball. Do you have to recruit the rest of the roster like you're recruiting Shaley with a the new head coach? Absolutely. And, and to go back a little, that's probably the biggest, uh, the hardest thing about the timing of Judd retiring and the new hire is that the portal was so alive mm. and then potentially losing Shaley or not, whatever, there's not really a lot out there, right? Given At this the point. timing, yes, right? Was maybe because there was four or five weeks in between Judd retiring and the, and the new hire. You're not going to get anybody out of the portal not knowing who your head coach is, right? Understandably. Like, Hashtag so, BYU red tape. It, so that's, so yeah. that's a little dicey. That's what's the hardest part. If Shaley potentially leaves about replacing her is like, ah, the, the wave of the portal, we're going to have to get creative and figure out what we can do if that potentially happens. But Men's team is in the same situation. For sure. Trying and they're, they're out, trying right? to, you know, bring or take care of the production that they've lost, right? Sure. But so. at least their head coach is in place. To sure. your point, like, how sure. do you recruit enough. somebody out of yeah. the transfer portal yeah. when yeah. you don't have a head coach for yeah. a month? Right, because May 1st, the deadline. If you're not in there before then, you can't play right away. So anybody that enters now, unless there's a waiver, potentially, they're not going to They're gonna have to sit a year and then play. So it gets dicey, but we, we like who we have. You know, obviously, we love Shaley. Okay, we want her back, but we like who we have, too. And the reps can't be you know, simulated in practice, they're going to get those on the fly. I can't speak for everyone on this, but when, when COVID happened, I think we thought like, oh, this is, gonna, th this is going to affect these players for like two or three years. No, it's like a five-year deal. Sure. Or maybe six or seven, because there, there would have been more reps for certain people if certain people weren't there for a fifth year. Yeah. Now, the benefit last year was it was the most fun, amazing regular season <laughs> we've ever seen in BYU women's basketball history. It was, it was worth it. It was awesome. But the reps that we're going to see now, are, it's going to be exciting with some of these young players Absolutely. Like you talked about that, that are kind of second and third string last and, year. And truthfully, they, they have a right to be a little frustrated because in the recruitment was, hey, Paisley's going to be gone, Tegan's going to be gone, Maria, Sarah, come play. We don't play. anticipate a pandemic. Right, like come and play in this big opportunity, and then they get here, and it's like, well, four seniors coming back, and you know, all the five starters are back. And so it's just, yeah, they're excited for their chance. Mm -hmm. Former BYU women's basketball player Morgan Bailey was just announced as part of this staff. Um, what can you tell us about Morgan and what she will bring 
to BYU women's basketball as she now joins on with you and with Amber Whiting. Yeah, I think for her, the credibility is there. She was Mountain West, I believe Mountain West, maybe West Coast Conference. I know she's got a big plaque in the annex. <laughs> so she was player of the year. So the credibility is there. We had our first practice yesterday. She got to work with the girls immediately connection just because of her credibility on the court. She's tough. She's fiery as well. Um, she wants to be great and is excited for it. I'm excited to work with her, and uh, it's going to be good. Yeah, 2015 West Coast Conference player. Okay, here. WCC. You know what? In a couple of years, we're not going to. Uh, it's all good. Um, Lisey's lawn care. Oh wow! Is that, is that happening? Like you, as, uh, a, as a, when we were all in school together, you had you had said that this was an ambition of yours to own a lawn care business. How how's that coming along? I'm just glad I'm here with you guys <laughs> and, and not and not performing lawn Outside services trimming, right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Getting the so. crews out there. Make your millions and just buy a lawn care company there that you, you just oversee. You're there not you telling go. me you got the seed money from Belgium there for Lisey's lawn care, Lee. <laughs> One day, potentially, my son's named after me, so maybe he'll start it. Yeah, so it can still. It'll carry. be little Lizzie's lawn service. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Another L, perfect. Yeah. Lee, great to have you in studio. We Thanks. appreciate you being here. What a wild month! Uh, but and I know that you're super busy right now, so thanks for taking some time with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having. Glad me. you're still here, man. Yeah, it's good. good to see you. Okay.